Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This fun with model kits build and conversion covers the Liberty Mutual Patrol car, featuring Lee Mew and Doug as our frugal watchmen duo. Always on the alert for unsuspecting consumers that are willing to pay for more than they need, you'll often see them plying the streets of the metropolis, ready to lend some financial advice. This is a fun kit with models and a review that's meant to demonstrate to you the hobby can be fun. And if you see something that catches your eye, don't be afraid to give it a shot. Most of the items that were added on were made from household materials like thumbtacks and vinyl tape, or from spares out of the parts box. The only tricky additions were the decals, but most of those can be made from online images and printed on decal paper with an inkjet printer. The donor kit for this model is a 2006 re-release of the AMT 38456 71 Plymouth Duster kit in 125th scale. It's packed with details in great proportions and includes the gear to build an awesome 340 Duster muscle car. It's an easy skill level 2 builder and it's very similar to the 72 Duster featured in the Lemieux and Doug TV commercials. Now I'll show you how to make the conversion look close to the featured car. But since most of the changes are only external, that's about all that you're going to see because that's all you can see in the ad. Here's the layout of the parts in the kit. And as you can see, it's got a lot of detail pieces. It comes with some nice, uh, easy to mount glass, uh, plenty of chrome uh, for where you need it, and a great set of decals for the 340 Duster. But as I've said, there will be a lot of these pieces that we won't use, including the engine, uh, which we're not going to include because this is going to be a curbside model uh, and just uh, de demonstrates the external uh, changes that you see and are featured in the ad. One of the aftermarket products that I used for this uh, build was a set of gauges from Best Model Car Parts. He's available on the internet and through online auction services and he makes some uh, nice product there for a uh, small amount of money. Um, so so they, they fit right into the gauge nacelles and we'll show you how that's done later. Quite often the other thing you'll need to do for builds like this is to make your own custom graphics uh, for decals. Um, these were made uh, in this case in PowerPoint uh, but just about any graphic and image program can be used to import those uh, images and make decals from. You just put them on decal paper and print them out with a color inkjet printer. Lemu needs a driver so he can spot those naive consumers and we're going to use uh, the 125 uh, kit item that came out of the MPC 798 Dodge Dart Sport Kit uh, a few years later and that uh, lends itself well as it's also 125 scale. Well the centerpiece of the whole thing is Lemu and uh, that is the Liberty Mutual Emu and this particular toy was found on the internet and I had to modify it of course uh, for one thing he was a little too tall to fit inside there so uh, we had to uh, do a little bit of uh, surgery on his legs and we'll do some cosmetic surgery on him too to make him look just like the TV ad item. Here's what the uh, Liberty Mutual patrol car looks like. Um, it's not a die a di a Duster 340. It looks more like a fleet vehicle that's been uh, modified um, and uh, it's rather plain and we'll have to make some corrections. The Duster body comes with slots uh, prepared for the uh, spoiler that goes on the back there for the 340 version and also um, the tail lights have changed on the 72. They're a little wider so we'll be changing that and also adding uh, some driver lights up front, uh, turn signal lights there, uh, and changing that from the 71 version. We'll modify the openings to accommodate the backup lights here by widening them to a pre-measured uh, line there on the body with a small saw. I use some uh, modeling putty here to go ahead and fill those holes for the spoiler and also to touch up the uh, tail light openings. We can do some more of the body prep too. As you see here the red circle there's a, a little bit of flash there uh, for parting line flash and also the, uh, the holes have been filled in so it's time to go around the body, remove any flash and any imperfections that you see there. 
Now I drilled out a hole where the new uh, turn signal lenses were, were to be placed. Um, they're topical as opposed to recessed and behind the grill like on the 71 to make it look more like the 72 version. So I made a few blanks out of some thin sheet styrene and uh, flattened that area out to place those into position. Then I went ahead and I uh, used some bare metal foil and I chromed those for reflective purposes and glued them into place uh, where the 72's uh, turn signals are. I found a piece of um, covering for a headlight assembly and the two sections that are pointed out here with the white arrows are perfect fits for our tail light or our turn signal lenses up front. To finish out the grill We'll glue the uh, headlights and those lenses have been glued into place using some uh, crystal clear uh, product white glue and then we'll also black out the background of the grill because the uh, 72 had horizontal lines whereas 71 had vertical lines but uh, it was blacked out anyway so you can barely see it. The kit tires are great. Uh, there's some nice Goodyear radials but they had uh, overemphasized the script on them so that people could paint them white and highlight the letters. So I replaced them with a set of uh, nondescript uh, black wall tires from the parts box. I found some regular steelies for the wheels and I painted them yellow body color and then I also found some thumbtacks and I removed the uh, the sticker portion there and then I'm going to use those by covering up the outside with some bare metal foil and buffing that to a shine for the shallow moonies that appear on the fleet car that we're going to build. I had to shallow up the uh, wheel backs a little bit uh, to make sure that they fit properly because they're a little on the deep side and then with some epoxy glue I assembled the units into a nice looking set of tires. Using some household items like these uh, perfume bottle spray caps etc. Um, I went ahead and that's what I'll use to produce the uh, blue light uh, up on top of the vehicle. Now that hole there um, gets filled and covered with some foil. Then I went ahead and added a little piece of stem uh, sprue there in the center to help with mounting it later on when I put it onto the vehicle. Then finally you can see the finished product here. There's also a couple little reflective dots inside uh, after the uh, clear section there was tinted with a little thinned blue paint. Here are the primary colors that I'll be using. Of course some fine white primer and some dull coat. Uh, also the classic white model master and uh, a Chevy Daytona yellow for the um, clothes and the car. Whenever you're choosing a color for your vehicle, you can always just uh, use the old spoon test and spray them up to see how they look to make sure you get a good match. You can even change the underlayment with a different color primer to get a different tone. After a couple of thin coats of the white primer had dried, I went ahead and sprayed the entire car with the classic white. And then I got out some tape because we're going to be doing some panel taping to make the different panels a different color on the, on the vehicle. Lining up the tape with the quarter panel creases and using the reference photo, I uh, determined that these were the places that we needed to go ahead and tape off to keep the white portions white. After that, we'll spray it yellow. After removing the tape, we now have our patterned car with a white top and the white panels on the quarters so that we have an authentic looking Liberty Mutual patrol car color scheme. I let the paint dry for a couple of days in the dehydrator and then I started putting on foil for the accent pieces on the vehicle. You can see that there's a lot of chrome because this is still the early 70s and they were still putting a lot of chrome pieces onto the vehicles. Bare metal foil product is pretty easy to use. It's just like tape. You stick it on and then you trim off the excess and then you buff it down to give yourself a nice looking chrome finish. Here are the Liberty Mutual logo decals printed out in both clear and white. And you might ask yourself why. I'll show you in a second. First we'll use the uh, decals that were printed on the clear paper to put the large Liberty Mutual insurance uh, script on the door panels. It also printed out the uh, Statue of Liberty icons uh, on a piece of plain paper. Then I cut them out. And then I transferred that 
to some plain white paper and um, I cut those out of the white paper decals that I had uh, produced and then I applied those in the area where the blue uh, decals will be put later and I'm using here what Fred Cady had pretty much perfected as the underlayment decal system. Uh, you, you couldn't print white decals exactly in multicolors, so he put the white in behind whatever he was going to display. Surprisingly, even with uh, a little bit of over-engineering over for the front end, um, these um, parts go together very well. They, they actually are more robust, uh, with possibly the exception of the knuckle, which um, actually mounts in the front end on just two small spindle holes, uh, top and bottom A-arms. But the, for the most part, it's easy to build and it's pretty sturdy, especially if you build it all at one time with some super glue for strength. Then I went ahead uh, after it was done and sprayed the whole thing with some flat black. Next I staged up all the interior pieces and I had to do a little bit of work on the floorboards there uh, to convert it to the fleet vehicle. I filled the hole in the floor that was meant for the Dodge 340's shifter and I also converted uh, the steering column into one with an automatic uh, shift lever on it. The shift lever there uh, was simply made from a straight pin with a round head. Uh, once again, some household material. We're going to work on the dashboard by removing some of the features inside the gauge nacelles there. Um, they protrude, which would not allow the decals to set flush and be visible. So I just used a hobby knife to remove those pieces. Then I got out the, um, actually they're not decals, they're printed gauges, and you just cut them out of the paper and then use some white glue to apply them uh, into the gauge clusters and also the, the radio there. Then I just trimmed out the rest of the dash with the uh, silver chrome pen uh, for the buttons and the dial gauge bezels. I also used the Molotov chrome pen to detail some of the trim on the rather nondescript interior. Um, with the door handles and the trim pieces there, it gives it a little something interesting to look at. Now we're getting nearer time to start fitting things together. So I took out the parts for uh, Doug's um, figure here and, and started to put those together. I used some clamps to make sure that the seams were nice and tight. And then I started doing some mock-ups of uh, Doug and Lemieux in the vehicle's interior to see what kind of space I had for the occupants. As it turned out, there was plenty of space to wiggle the driver into position, but no space for a seat for the emu. So the seat was removed and was replaced with something else. I glued the four wheels into position on the stubs uh, for the axle uh, pins there, and they mounted up pretty well. And also, because they articulate, uh, you can actually pose the front wheels, um, you know, to left or right. And here we are with uh, Doug in the driver's seat in a rolling chassis on which to build the rest of the vehicle. Okay, and as you would expect, an emu sits in a nest. So I used a burlap bag and I uh, shredded some of the fibers and made Lemu a nest. I glued the nest materials into position using some white glue and then I walked away until the next day. When I had returned, I found out that Lemu is a girl. One of the prominent features in the ad are the brown aviator glasses worn by both Doug and Lemu and so I went ahead and got some of the 26 gauge beading wire and I made some glasses for both of them. I just twisted it around a small pair of needle nose pliers and I came up with this. Later on I decided to add some lenses so I used a little of the crystal clear glue which dries clear and then I tinted it with some uh, thinned brown paint on the top section to provide those iconic aviator glasses. When the Doug character was finished I gave him a nice coat of gray primer. In order to achieve the effect that I wanted uh, with uh, the particular version of the emu that was used in the commercial, I put some a modeling putty all over the body of the emu and I stippled it except for the chest area which I sanded smooth in order to provide the shirt. Then I gave him a nice even coat of black 
flat black primer as a base coat. Now Doug on the other hand got a coat of yellow paint uh, to emulate the Liberty Mutual color uh, shirt. I hand painted Lemieux's shirt with the uh, yellow uh, decanted color and then I cut some uh, material from some blue vinyl tape to provide the ties that they wear for the commercials. Also they have some lanyards so I printed out the lanyard icon and I used some wire wrapping wire to go ahead and provide the uh, lanyard for them uh, to wear their badging. Also they got some labels on their shirts so I printed some small decals for that purpose. Of course he's got blue jeans, black pants, brown hair and flesh tone uh, face for Doug and his hands and arms and he's also got a mustache so don't be afraid just use a small brush and do the best you can. After a few coats of dull coat I go ahead and uh, let those dry and place them into position using some epoxy glue. Measure to the center of the uh, top where it looks like the uh, blue beacon is placed on the vehicle. Drilled a hole and then inserted my stud through there and trimmed it off and used a little epoxy glue to keep it in place. Then I turned the model over and I outlined the uh, interior section with a black sharpie, a large wide one, and then paint, hand painted the rest of it to give it a black interior for roof liner, etc. Then it's time to go ahead and start working with the glass. I used some white glue and just glued them into position and they snapped right on to their mounting bosses. Before I mounted those side windows though, the quarter windows in the back, uh, they have a little bit of chrome trim on the front edge so I just used some foil and a straight edge and go ahead and play, put that into position, uh, tamp it down and then smooth it out and it looks just like a chrome trim piece. I cut some thin uh, plastic sheet stock from uh, white styrene and bent it right in the middle to give it about a, a 30 degree bend and then I went ahead and glued the tail lights into position on the inside of the car's body there uh, and protruded out into the uh, openings. Then I placed the uh, white um, material to the uh, inside there towards the trunk key. Gave it a, a very similar look to the backup lights on the 72 duster. Let's uh, install the grill and the bumper and there are some slots provided and a slot boss here which makes mounting them very easy. Uh, just scrape off the paint uh, and uh, from the slot opening and any chrome from the area there and go ahead and glue them into position using some modeling glue. One last detail to go and that's to print out some license tags. Uh, depending on where it's used this particular vehicle could have either of these plates on it. Now we can simply spread the body a little bit and place it down on into position on the chassis and it fits right there. You won't even need any glue for this one. And there you have it. And if I were you, I'd build one for yourself. Don't be shy now. Find something that piques your interest and go for it. Keep your hobby fun and exciting. When you're done, you'll have a great conversation piece to put on your display shelf. As for the kit itself, it was really a very decent kit. Uh, like I said, the detail and proportions were great, and uh, since I made a curbside out of this, I've got a great V8 engine that I can put in my parts stash. So, uh, don't be afraid, once again, have some fun, and go after something that you really like to see on your shelf. Oh, there you have it. We hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit conversion and build. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right hand of any of our reviews. You can also find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com.